Now perhaps you could consider this to be a third, slightly more controversial area of Rome, that would be the Muslims. For those of you who don't know, um, Islam kind of, which is the faith of the Muslims, got started when a man called Muhammad in what's now Saudi Arabia had a revelation that said he was a prophet. Um, Muhammad ended up preaching a faith with a great emphasis on monotheism. Uh, so one of the key tenets of Islam is there's no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his prophet. Um, Islam had two sides to it. It was a political as well as a religious entity, um, and there was much kind of fighting against the uh, what were viewed as apostates and uh, the pagans uh, to kind of impose this monotheistic faith. Uh, and after the death of the Prophet Muhammad in 632 BC, um, the Islamic Caliphate, which his successors uh, were known as Caliphs, uh, expanded outwards into the surrounding territories. They met with great success. Um, part of the reason for this was that the two major regional powers, the Byzantines, the heirs of Rome we discussed before, and the Sasanians, the successors to Persia, had been engaged in a protracted war throughout most of the Middle East and North Africa. Um, because of this kind of power vacuum and exhausted armies, Persia fell quickly, as did the southern provinces of Rome and Byzantium, and soon most of North Africa, the Middle East and Spain were under the control of one united empire, the Islamic Caliphate. Now to get back to why the Muslims were so successful, as well as, you know, um, the Byzantines and the Sasanians being weak, the Muslims were also strong. They had uh, excellent generals such as Khalid ibn al-Walid and uh, hardy troops. Um, they used the speed of their light cavalry to great effect at the Battle of Walaja, where the Sasanians were caught in a pincer movement, and again at the Battle of Yamuk against the Byzantines, where um, Ibn al-Walid had the foresight to cut off their retreat, uh, turning what would have been a fairly orderly retreat into a complete rout. From an administrative front, the Muslims had a hands-off approach to government that was appealing to local populations, tired of paying taxes for endless wars and court and religious extravagance. The, the Muslims didn't have an emphasis on religious art in the way that the Byzantines did with their gold-plated icons. And the Muslims were also at least at first free from the eternal descent which fractured the Byzantines and the Persians. Now kind of, what sort of level of achievement did the Muslims get to? Was it as great as Rome itself? Was it even better? Well, kind of the golden age of Islam, it was probably quite close to Rome. Um, in terms of population size, the largest Muslim cities such as Cordoba in Spain and Baghdad in Iraq had around 450 inhabitants in the 9th century, um, while Constantinople, which was the largest European city, only had around 400,000 and there was none close to Constantinople. In perspective, it's believed that ancient Rome had upwards of 500,000, maybe even a million. Um, so there was much kind of more progress being made in the Islamic Empire at this time than in the infightings among the uh, the Western states and in Byzantium. Um, now, the Muslims had a great emphasis on scholarship. Um, the initial Rashidun Caliphate had been succeeded by the Umayyads and later the Abbasid Caliphate, except in Spain. Um, and much learning had been encouraged under the Umayyads. Uh, the Abbasids, who would go on to invent the world's first paper mill, were um, even more into learning. And they were also more inclusive of non-Arabs in the running of government. And perhaps in this, the interest in Greek philosophy, um, the kind of uh, the multi-ethnic society and uh, almost multi kind of cultural society that the uh, the the caliphate was presiding over could be viewed as a natural successor to Rome. Um, indeed they almost set up their own academy which is known as the House of Wisdom where many books of Greek learning including philosophy were translated into Arabic and it's from these books that we in the West uh, owe a great debt because that's often where we got our copies of the Greek classics. And it's to this house of wisdom that we now turn.